Hello, welcome back uh, to Hot Air. Uh, I'm Lloyd and I'm Tony. I'm Tony, as yeah. usual. That's right. I haven't um, changed yet. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, do you know what we 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 did a video? I guess it'll be last week now, won't yes. it? Uh, and we never mentioned. I wanted to mention the the HFT video because uh, we've got I, a new asset. We have got a new asset, um, and and actually we uh, we. Hopefully everybody watched that that video, and, and you know, even if you're not into HFT, I hope you watched it anyway because I thought Roger was uh, Roger Lay was was fantastic on it, uh, and and we really appreciate the feedback that you gave us because uh, it's a lot of really good feedback actually. I was a bit worried to do HFT because I thought some people are going to find it a little bit dull or you know, and there was yeah. two negative comments on the video, but apart from that, everybody else was absolutely fantastic, and we had. We've had quite a few people say, oh, that looks interesting. Roger did a really good job. I fancy having a go. Yeah, so. he pretty much took everything we threw at him, didn't he? He, he did. Uh, it, yeah. yeah, he did really well. In fact, that well, you actually asked him to sort of do a little bit yeah, more, Yeah, I you? thought he was brilliant on camera. I know he's doing that sort of semi-professionally, you know, anyway. Mm. Uh, so I said to him, you know, would you mind doing a little bit for us, maybe as a roving reporter? And he willingly accepted. So I think we have our first piece. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Right. Shall we put it up? Roll them. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome to Rogers Roven Report. So, since I was in the studio last, we had the World Championships. Now that was fun. It was a brilliant, brilliant location. Fantastic weather. The British team did so, so well. Sort of. They didn't do what I really hoped we'd do and win. Uh, probably down to me actually, but there you go. Um, we got third place overall. The, the teams that beat us were just outrageously good. Um, fantastic courses, long. Oh my goodness, about five and a half hours per, per course. It was, um, it was a really good time, really testing. I mean, the heat, it was like 38 degrees one day. And, you know, after drinking a lot of water that day. And that evening, we'd, we'd drunk a few bottles of water too. Anyway, yeah, that was good fun. So, uh, at the moment, I'm just out in the woods, right, just having a little practice. Um, I've just got to keep my eye in, really, because I'm not shooting great. Anyway, the other thing I've been up to at the moment, I'm looking at a Daystate Czar. Now, my mates bought one, right, and there's been a bit of controversy about these, uh, as you probably know. Uh, Tony sitting there squirming away, I know. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm having a look at it with him. Uh, so far, it's been interesting, yeah? Does it work? Yeah, it does work. Does it fit? It fits beautifully. But we want to refine it and get it really, really bang on. So in very, very short time, right, we're going to get him out shooting it. Uh, so keep your eye out for that one. That's going to be an interesting little number because, I mean, he's a very, very good shot. He's a lot better than me, mind you, most people are. Um, let's see how we go. Uh, but that was going to be really interesting. Anyway, guys, back to you in the studio. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that was interesting. Thank you very much, Rachel. Right, right. uh, hopefully that'll be... Um, I, well, I, I, you know, if it's going to be a, a sort of a, a regular thing... Yeah, he's going to do... We're going to have one per, per episode. So uh, and also, as well, I did actually mention if he can series. do um, a sort of HFT roundup at the end of the season, which I think will be really... So it'd be great to get Roger back on. Yeah, uh, oh, he wants to come back on. So. Well, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy Roger's little piece there. Um, uh, but moving on, uh, yes. as you can see, we've got some... Uh, well, Oh, we've got a desk full of well, oldies. Well, the other question that we were asked is we want to see older rifles, and of course it's not so commercially interesting for other channels, but we're not like that, are we? So, no, we're not doing so it for we're, commercial We're not doing interest. it for commercial reasons. So we have, we've both raided the fridge, basically, and gone and got some nice stuff. I've borrowed these off uh, Bob, at City, Bob Phelps at City Air Weapons. Yeah. Uh, Solly Hull. Thank you, Bob, for this loan of these beautiful rifles. Now, this is my childhood. This is the guns that I... Dr bit well, before my time, so just we'll drooled to... over. The, uh, the, the web, uh, so can I do mine first? You can do, do, your, we'll yeah. do whatever you want. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So leave the best to last. All right, then. The, the German one. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so this is the Webley Mark III. Now Webley Mark III, if you're of any age like I am, was the gun to mm. have. It was just out of most people's price range, out of everybody's league. And I didn't get one of these until I was nearly 16. So you know, I've been started shooting air guns 12. But I had to wait for my first pay pack. My first pay pack, it's not this one, unfortunately, I haven't got it, but I uh, bought a Webley Mark III. And they were just beautiful, weren't they? Yeah. This is an early one. I think this is sort of late 60s, probably. They put a, they tacked on a dovetail for a scope, which it didn't need uh, later on. But, you know, around yeah, 89. Yeah, sort of ruined that. It ruined yeah. the, the, ruined well, they the cheapened lines, them it? everywhere because they were just basically handmade, weren't they? Yeah. Um, I'm by no means an expert on Webleys. Uh, I know that they have an early version with uh, some ribs, ribs, on, ribs the on the side, stock. 
and yeah. they progressively got cheaper as they went on. I think this is probably in its heyday. It's got the beautiful scalp tap there. Yeah. Uh, the bluing is deep bluing, which is original web bleed because they always did it. Actually, some job. manufacturers could actually like should take note of the quality of that bluing. They had a guy who did it, and um, when he retired, it stopped mm. basically. And for the 30, 40 years he worked at web bleed, the quality of the bluing and the finish was just second to none. And other companies, uh, including Daystate, used to go to web bleed and get them done. I, well, do you know what? I know it's a, I know it's only a little little thing, but I, I really love the little the little badge yeah. inset in the stock. It's just just class. Yeah, they, they even that went on because I've seen different versions of that. It does WG and Co and or it does Webley and like that. And there's a later one as well where it's in typeface. So you, that goes on. You, some of them have stippling, some of them don't. This, I think this is one to be refinished. It looks like it's at a maybe. Possibly, Because they yeah, weren't so varnished and this looked like it's been oiled. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah. Lovely, lovely thing. And, and obviously you've got, um, I mean, I, I'm sure everybody who's watching this program has probably seen these and maybe even shot, shot one. But uh, it, basically you've got tap loading, underlever cocking. Um, and actually, I mean, it wasn't really that that bad to cock. It was like it was just. Fair it was bad when you were fifteen. Yeah, maybe yeah. so. Yeah, maybe yeah. But there yeah. you go. That's cocking. Yeah. No, no, no safety catch. No. Um, well, you could lift the tap. You could lift the tap. Yeah. yeah. In fact, actually, that's how you told. Uh, you, that's cock how it you, like that. Cock it like that. Lift the tap because lift. if you do, if the lever does go now, as long as the tap's not faulty, and quite a lot of them were. Yeah. It wouldn't actually fly back. It well, would, you can always work. tell a good tap because if you close it, I don't know whether you can hear that on camera, but basically, they, and, and they were hand lapped, yeah. weren't they? they the weren't, leather, leather washer on the piston. The, the, those, those taps were actually hand lapped, so basically when, when you heard that hiss then, that, that basically the tap is such a good seal the the it's obviously trying to suck the air in um and as soon as you open the uh, as soon as you open the tap again that actually allows the air to go in and that's how you can hear that so that's the the fantastic seal amazing just but it's in that in the old days time. i mean some stuff didn't even have piston seals in the old days no they used to just, just carve an o-ring into the piston head and then it would slam in the end and just destroy itself over time all the spring yeah but these were leather piston heads on them i think all the way to the end yes that's right yeah yeah it went from i was looking the other day at just to, I had a rough idea what I was talking about, and it went from 1946 right through to 1975. So God, was it 75? 75, they stopped on the Mark III. Right, okay. And then it went into the Balkans and all the other tap. Right, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, I, one little, I, I always remember um, one little fact from many, many years ago. I think it was probably about 20, 25 years ago. Um, and there was a story that Webley, uh, had actually worked out how much it would cost to build this gun, uh, to build it from from scratch 20 years ago, and it was £700 yeah. to actually produce something of that And when quality. it went out of production, there's another story that a guy went in to buy the tooling and he was showed a, a lathe and a mill. Really? Yeah. And that was it? That was the tooling, yeah. So it was, you know, it, it's a, quite a handmade gun. There's an awful, you, I don't know how you would make this. There's so many shapes and, and then none of them are quite the same. You can see the difference in the hand finishing on them. What we have here is the super target version. Which, yeah. Uh, I, now they'd usually have it engraved on it, and it is, but I think it's been polished out. Oh, it says they're super target. Usually it does, yeah, yeah. Than just, that. just see. So maybe it, yeah. that one's been polished at some point because it is beautifully done. And that's uh, slightly. I seem to remember. I never owned one of these. Nobody could afford to. But they, yeah, slightly longer barrel, slightly heavier barrel, mm -hmm. and very slightly heavier barrel, but the same beautiful finish. But no open sight. I think that was that Williams. They, they, they diff, different companies, I think. Uh, I think they certainly were Parker Hale. I think they had um, various companies did them, didn't they? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't know what they used at the end. What's that? Usually stamped on them. What's that one? Does it say? I haven't got my glasses on. All right, okay. I can't, look. can't see anything. Um, that's Parker Hale. Is that's it Parker, Parker Hale? Hale one. So, yeah, and they different different makes from time to time. Value wise. Um, Ooh, I, that's your department. Well, that, I mean, it, it's funny because they they vary wildly. We've, um, you know, if you get a lot of them, unfortunately, you know, the the stocks are a little bit tatty. The bluing's gone a, a little bit um, from about one nine five, um, sort of minimum, really. Yeah. Something like that, which is in lovely condition. If that was a, if that's original blue, you could be looking at well, I don't know, maybe three fifty, sort of four hundred. Um, Great value for and, something so classic. And the super target uh, because of the rarity um that's going to be worth probably at least another hundred pounds more right. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, not ridiculous. No, you know. Um, no, that sounds quite. But the nice brilliant. thing is with these is there's there's um, a still an amazing amount of them about. Yeah. It goes to show the longevity and the quality of this rifle because not only are they about, but they're I, well, I wouldn't say they're shootable in comparison with a modern sort of Virac or whatever, but I tell you what, they, 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 they are shootable. Mm. You know, they're not a bad rifle. Not full power. Um, no, I think 10 is the most you'll max, ever see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I would say on average, an older one now is probably pumping out in between 6 and about 9 foot pounds. Yeah. Uh, when they came out, I think they were about sort of 10-ish, something yeah. like that, which, you know, was reasonable. So the contemporary of this, the, the balance of the Webley, because, uh, you know, you always have... You used tend to have companies that have the opposite, you know, um, so Ducati de Verda or Ducati Norton or, <laughs> or and in this case it was BSA versus Webley, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. They were yeah. always like the, you know, the opposite. And the BSA did a uh, airsporter, which I couldn't get, so maybe we'll have to come back and have a look at some airsporters. Well, I, 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 yeah, I, I've actually, uh, a collector's contacted me and, um, in fact, Ian Jones has contacted me right. and he's, he's got... That's the troublemaker we mentioned The troublemaker time. from the last video. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, he's got uh, he's got all sorts of weird stuff like sharp pan target. I've never right. seen a pan target. Okay, so Ian, we need uh, some uh, BSA airsport and I want one with the auto taps. So and also as well, he's got, uh, he's got a, he's evidently got quite a few BSFs. He was a bit of a BSF collector. Right. Vi so um, I think BSF was, a, was bought out by Farak. We were talking about this earlier. Yeah. So maybe Ian can give us a bit of information on yeah, that. Right. So what I've also brought, now this is interesting for me, probably not for anybody else, but this is an original. This is a, not an original, original, an original. There's original, uh, which is, I suppose, Diana. So the, uh, this is an original 50. Um, and at the time that these were out, the fiendish Germans... Uh, were making what they felt was a better rifle. And a lot of British gun shops felt the same and wouldn't sell you a Webley Mark III, they would sell you an original because it was a better gun. It was more powerful mm. and it had some features in it which were better than the Webleys or indeed the BSAs. And I can remember going to my local gun shop and you say, oh, I'm not selling you one of those. Uh, what you want is one of these. And this was the gun. Now, I couldn't afford this. This was too expensive at the time. But... It's uh, it's interesting to have one on because this is the gun that started to knock down the British guns. A uh, 50B. It has some interesting features. Uh, do you know the story of original and Diana? Do you know? Do you... Yeah, I do, but um, I, I haven't got it all sort of sorted out in my head because yeah. there is a timeline. Because I'm, I'm dumping what... it on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I know about the the the, the, the fact that uh, the second what happened in the second war. I tell you what, you go on, you. you... Well, because uh, mine won't be correct either. But but basically, what happened is that uh, the Diana factory was moved across to making military weapons during the war. Consequently, when the war ended, they were not in favour. And uh, I, there's also... It was part of the reparations, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so they were given... Uh, well, they were sold off. So certain companies... In fact, if you, the famous one is Volkswagen, who was offered to Aust to Austin. And they said, it's not worth having. Keep it. And that's, but that, how did that work out? But the uh, but certainly Diana Verk was offered to... Uh, was bought out by Miller, Milbra Brothers Milbra, in Scotland, yeah. in yeah. Glasgow. And they started... They used to have, then had the Diana brand. And they started making the Diana rifles. Mm -hmm. So... Um, when they finished with the, you know, when the war operation thing had finished in the late 50s, really, uh, the original factory, which I think had, uh, well, the original factory, the Diana factory, which had moved because it was all in East Germany and they were basically picked up by the Americans and dumped in West Germany, started up again, but they couldn't use the Diana name, so they made the same designs as mm -hmm. Milbra Diana, um, but under the original, and they put original in inverted commas, and it's actually engraved on the gun. Mm. So you had the Diana 55, and the original... So you were basically, 50. you had German Diana, you had Milbro Diana, Diana, and then you had Diana, but original. So there's sort of three yeah, different... Yeah, but all the German ones were called original, because they didn't have access to the name, and all the British ones were called Diana, because they'd been given or bought the name from the government. Right. The, uh, later on in the, uh, I think in 1985 or something like that, the Germans bought the name back, mm -hmm. quite right, and they then started trading under uh, a Scrammel and May speech or something. I started, can't pronounce it, and yeah. I'm not, not going to slay that they name. But they started to make them under Diana brand, and Diana brand goes right up till really about five years ago when it was bought out again. And mm. so Diana's back, but under new ownership. This is an original, which I suppose is Diana. It has an underlever cocking with a catch and a slick tap. Really, really, look at that tap. Compare that to 
the British guns. It's it, it's nice, but the one thing about these guns is is the the, the nightmares it gave you when somebody brought one in in bits and said, I, I've, I've stripped my Oh, dime. you're thinking as a gunsmith, because this had a yeah. bent piece of steel as a trigger. Mm -hmm. These had something a little bit more complex, didn't they? Yeah, it was, a, yeah. It was a, well, they called it the three ball bearing trigger unit, didn't they? And it yeah. was, um, when you stripped it down, you generally never got them back together. <laughs> <laughs> you really had to know what you're doing. I'm sure there's like guys out there that sort of said, "Oh, I could do one of these in my sleep," but you'd really needed some practice. Uh, and, and, and an average guy who was changing his spring and strip one of those trigger units down, I could guarantee they'd come back in a bag of bits. So, and, and, and they'd come through the door with a plastic bag and going, "Oh, I've stripped my Diana down, and, and can you put it back together again?" You're like, "Oh no, God!" Yeah. But um, the gun itself, they were um, powerful. They were well built. They lasted forever. Yep. I still rather have the Mark III. And and I, so would I. Yeah. Um, and it's obviously we did a, we did a modern Diana, didn't we? We did yes. the Entech. Um, yeah. It's because Diana now. Uh, I I think Diana are back on the march of getting better. They Very went much through, so. They went through a few years where they were awful, weren't they? They were overpriced. I can remember coming in your, in your shop to do some research on one, and you couldn't find one in a box which wasn't broken. Yeah. Uh, oh God! I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and they went through the uh, the Dyna P one thousand precharge as well, which the less said about that, the better, because yeah. that was that was just didn't didn't sell and yeah. didn't but really work. They brought it back, they've sorted it out, and it kind of works. I out. think they brought a Mark II one out, haven't they? But yeah. it's not. Yeah. Anyway, so that that's that. Yeah. Okay, so right, that's your go. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're gonna go go through that. that, right? Yeah. Well, evidently, I've got five minutes to to show you the best <laughs> rifle. Um, okay. Well, I I brought I brought another. Uh, I brought another German rifle, and uh, this is, in in my opinion, it was one of the best rifles on the market. Uh, it was, I can never remember the dates, 1973 to 1986, but right. I do know they made just over 60,000 of them. Um, so in modern terms, that's a lot of rifles, but in those days, probably it probably not a lot. probably wasn't worth making, to no. be honest with you, for yeah. the Fahrenheit. So this one is this is the Fahrenheit Sport. Yeah. Um, and Fahrenheit are very well known for all the, the target rifles, but they did a sporting rifle. Mm -hmm. um, it was in its day really it was a sort of competitor to the HW thirty five and the, the three three five. Yes. 335 wasn't a patch, was it really? No. It re no. no. So I, I would say the direct competitor was probably the HW35. Yeah. A couple of nice things about the Fighter Bow Sport. Uh, it was light in weight, it was just over seven pounds. Um, it had an incredibly light cocking effort. I think the average cocking effort for most uh, break barrels, that's the amount of effort you've got to put into cock it, was around about 25 to 30 pounds. I think these were about 19 pounds. Right. So in other words, it was really easy to cock. It was, it was, I they mean, have a great reputation. Everybody absolutely. still talks about them. Uh, yeah. Do you know what? I mean, this one, this one's second hand, and this is going for I think three, three, three seven five with a scope, and it's actually got a period scope on it. Yeah. Um, the sticker's still on it, which is lovely. It's got um, a, a two stage trigger. The trigger wasn't as good as the Virac. Yeah. It it was okay, you know, for sporting use. The Mark One um, had a plastic trigger on. I never got why they did that, but they brought the Mark Two out, which this is one of them, and they actually upgraded the trigger to aluminium. That, I'd love to have a detailed shot of that sling swivel, isn't that beautiful? Lovely. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you've also got a, a safety catch at the back there that you could actually, um, you could put on and take off without having to re cock the gun, which was, which was lovely. Swivels came as standard, really nice blue in. Few, uh, I mean, the, the the good points about it was you could carry it all day long. It was lightweight. It was accurate. A really accurate rifle. Uh, fantastic. Um, and the disadvantages were is when you stripped it down, the spring was about three foot long. <laughs> so it, was, a a surprise. So it yeah. was a real nightmare to actually change the spring on yeah. it. But what fantastic rifle. Yeah. Um, and if you ever get offered one of these at a reasonable price and you're into collecting air rifles or you just like spring guns, just get one. It's just fabulous. Um, the only the only other thing that I heard people say a lot that. was that... Well, do you know what? I was expecting that to be... The barrel lock up. Yeah. The, uh, a lot, in fact, do you remember Keystock conversions? They actually did a barrel locking system that yeah. used to have a little piece that you drilled in there and you actually had to slot it in place. And I yeah. think it was completely unnecessary. Yeah. But a lot of people criticised the, the barrel lock up, said yeah. it wasn't good enough. I had a couple of these rifles. I would imagine that. that, that could that come open with a sling on it? it only, only if it was heavily worn. I mean, right. I used to have a sling on mine because yeah. I used to hunt with mine a lot. And yeah. uh, I never had an issue with it. I didn't find, though, uh, that it was as accurate as the Virac. Right. And I think purely because it was so such a lightweight rifle, 
that it did recoil a little bit more. Not, you know, it, not a lot, not excessively, but you know, when you compared it, it recoiled a little bit more. Um, and so it wasn't quite as accurate as a fire out, but probably overall a better sporting rifle. Yeah. Um, Don't see them very often, do you? Not in that condition. No. No, um, it, it's, it's a lovely piece of kit. Funnily enough, uh, Farm It About are making a new version of this, um, and they've been threatening about it for a couple of years. And I went on the website this morning. If you go onto the farmitbound.de website, yeah. um, you'll see that they list one called the Sport. It's just called the Sport, not Mark III, Mark IV, just the Sport. Um, it's it's very, in fact, actually, do you know what? We'll put a picture up, because I've, I've actually saved a picture, so I'll put a picture up, and you can see the differences. It's it's modern, yeah. but not sleek or right. stylish. And also, as well, I've been told that if we do get them, they're going to be really, really expensive, because Final Bows were always... Everything about Final Bows was expensive. Everything was really yeah. expensive. I mean, yeah. even in the day, these were expensive. Yeah. Um, and they, they did do a Mark III, but the Mark III had a hideous... Um, barrel weight on it and, it and it didn't sell at all. Well, that doesn't exactly set me light either. I mean, look at it. What is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little rubber cover, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's not standard because obviously ah, it, it did okay. come with yeah. rear sights, and that was the only other disadvantage. Right. The rear sight was plastic yeah. and it was really expensive to replace if you broke it, and they did break very, very easily. But uh, overall, I think that's an absolutely stunning rifle. Mm. Uh, and this one's come from Ian's collection as well, right. Ian Jones. Uh, we're we're, well, we're yeah. selling it for him, yeah. but uh, that's, oh, right. okay. yeah. that's come from Ian yeah. and uh, it's just... That's right, just... Well, we want more stuff, Ian. Thank yeah, you very definitely. much. Thank you. Anyway, that's the final about sport and uh, and obviously the Webley Mark 3s and the uh, the original 50. Brilliant. So there you go. Back right. in a minute. Back in a minute. Or in a week. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve from the British Shooting Show. Uh, come and see us in February next year, 2019. We'll have wider aisles, uh, more space, and a bigger and better show. Thank you.